Welcome to Back to the Basics, the series where I show you how to do cool stuff related to Minecraft servers and modding. And today, I'm going to show you how to set up a Velocity network. If you see a Minecraft server with more than 100 players online, it is most likely not just a single server. Instead, it are multiple independent servers linked together by something which we call a proxy. Now, a proxy is also just a server, but you can't actually play on it. And its only goal in this case is making traffic between Minecraft servers possible. So your players can switch from one server to another without having to go back to the server list. Now, there are numerous different types of proxies available. The most popular one currently, and the one I would personally recommend the most, is Velocity. And in this video I'll be showing you how to set up a network using a velocity proxy all the way from start to finish. Now for a Minecraft network to make any sense you need a minimum of three servers. One of them will be the proxy and the other two will be Minecraft servers that players can actually play on which will be linked together by the proxy. So the first step will be getting Minecraft servers and it doesn't matter where you get them. In theory you can do this all locally on your own PC. You can also use any other hosting company that supports proxies. In my case, I'll be using longtime channel partner Alienhost. They recently completely renewed their website and it looks really, really cool. They now also support other games than just Minecraft, but after choosing a region, you can completely build your own server and customize it so it precisely fits your needs. So in my case, I'm gonna get a 20 gigabyte server with about four CPU V cores. And then when you're happy with the server you configured, we can click on build it and, and we can get it. You can choose the time frame you want to pay for and then you can simply purchase it. And what's really cool is if on Alienhost you go to the billing panel, you click on the three little dots on the right side of your server, then here where it says manage fleet, we can go to the fleet manager to split our server into multiple smaller servers. So the whole reason I bought a 20 gigabyte server is so that I can now split it into three independent servers that I can use for this velocity network. So I'm going to make one four gigabyte server and we're going to select velocity and this will be the proxy. And there we go. We now got an additional server. Let's go and create another one. This one, I'm gonna make eight gigabytes. We're gonna make it a paper MC server. We're gonna call it server one. Look at that. Good stuff, good stuff. And when we now go to the panel, you can see I now got three new servers here. Server one, which is one of the splits I made, then the proxy, and then server two, which is the original server. These two are a split off. Now, if you would like to host a server on Alien Host yourself as well, you of course can. There will be a link in the description of this video to their website. And if you use code Kassasura at checkout, you will get a whole 20% off of your first month, which will of course also help me out along the way. With that being said, even though I highly recommend Alienhost myself, this is not an Alienhost exclusive tutorial and you can follow this video no matter what host or platform you're on. So assuming you now have at least three servers available, let's go and actually set up this network. So the first thing we're going to set up is the proxy, aka the velocity server, the server that will link everything together. Now currently you can see that I already have a velocity.jar file here. This is because as soon as I created this server, I immediately chose for velocity. Now the way you can install velocity very much depends on where you're hosting your server. On Alienhost you can simply go to your dashboard, click on these three dots, and after that when you click on manage fleet and then go to the core manager here you can easily change what software is installed on what server most hosting companies out there should have something like this available somewhere on their website if you don't know where to find it i would recommend contacting support if you're hosting on your own system or at a hosting company that doesn't allow you to change your software with just a single click you can also manually download velocity from the paper mc website link can be found in the description down below simply click on this button and your download will start. Then upload it and you should be good to go. Looking good, our Velocity server is running. Now let's go to, in my case, server 1 and server 2 and set up PaperMC on these servers. Now of course you can have way more servers than just two. I'm just using two as an example for this video, but if you want to set up a network with 10 different servers, you can totally do that. And all the things I'm about to show you in this video, you can simply apply to all of your servers and then everything should just work correctly. So make sure you have PaperMC installed. Once again, most hosting providers allow you to install another software with just a few clicks. 
If they don't, I will leave a download link to PaperMC in the description down below so you can just manually upload it. After Paper is installed, we're gonna boot the server. We will get a message to accept the EULA, which we're of course gonna do. And then it will reboot once more and this time successfully. There we go, the server is running. Now this you wanna do for every single one of the servers you wanna connect to this network. Do keep in mind that to use Velocity, you need to run a paper server or a fork of paper. A spigot server will not do. Velocity is owned by paper and therefore to configure it, you need config files that only come with paper servers. Now, after all of your servers are set up, let's now connect them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Velocity proxy. We're going to go to Files and over here you want to open Velocity.toml. Inside of this config, there are a few things we need to change. First of all, you want to make sure that your bind address here on line 4 includes the port of your Velocity server. Simply scroll up and here you can see my server address together with my port. Make sure the bind port over here matches that. If it doesn't, do make sure to change it. Now you can change your MOTD, the max player, online mode if that's something you're into if you just own the game please keep this one on true but what we mostly want to change is the player info forwarding method on line 30 it is set to none by default and you want to make sure you change this to modern now a few important things you should know to get this network up and running we're gonna connect all of the paper mc servers we set up to this proxy you might assume that after setting it up players can only enter your network through your proxy and if they try to connect to one of the so-called backend servers, they will not be able to join. But this is not true by default. That is what this setting is for. By changing this to modern, we can make it so that players can only join this network through our proxy server, which is exactly what we want. If you're going to make a Minecraft network in a Minecraft version lower than 1.13, I would first of all not recommend doing that. Everything below 1.13 is really old and outdated. Also, when it comes to security, Security, but if you want to do it anyway, you will have to use Bungie Guard instead. I do have an old dedicated video on this channel about Bungie Guard. I might refresh that one too somewhere in the future. So that's an option you could opt for, but I would highly recommend you choose modern here. And then you want to make sure here on line 33 that formatting secret file is set to formatting.secret. If that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down all the way until we find the servers section, because this is where we're going to add our Minecraft servers. And the way you want to add these servers is by simply adding their IP. So all we need to connect these servers is an IP address. So when I go back to server 1 here on the dashboard, you can see the host name, which is an easy to remember domain to join the server. But beneath that, we also got the server IP. This is the one that you need. You simply want to copy it and also remember the port. And then in my case, I'm going to turn server 1 into the lobby. So I want to fill in that IP over here. But of course, we need to add the port as well. So I'm simply going to type colon and then 25647. There we go. This is the IP of server one, which will be my lobby. Now we're going to do the same thing for server two, which I'm going to turn into my SMP. Here at server two, simply going to copy the IP. In my case, it's on the same system, so it's the same IP, but it might differ for you. So we're going to fill that in here. There we go. Colon and then the port will be 25614 for me. Now below that, we can decide what servers our players should be sent to as soon as they join our network. Currently, they are sent to the lobby. And if they can't join the lobby, then they will simply not be able to join your network. But let's say your lobby is offline. Do you then want them to just not be able to join your network? Or do you want them to be sent to one of your other servers? So what you can do is simply type a comma here. And then in between quotation marks, we're going to type SMP. Now it will first try your lobby. If your lobby is offline, it will connect to your SMP. You can, of course, add way more servers here. Also, backup lobbies if you have those. So configure this how you please. Now, factions, we don't have that. Let me remove it. Now, here under forced hosts, you can configure join domains for specific servers. So you can, for example, make it so that minigames.yourserverdomain.com will straight up connect to your minigame server. And then lobby.yourdomain.com will go to the lobby. For most networks, this is not very relevant. I won't be using it today. What I personally always like to do is simply clear all of this if I'm not using it, just to be sure. But do whatever you feel like. Now, feel free to go through the rest of this conversation 
config and configure everything to fit your needs. I've changed all I want to change though, so I'm simply going to save content. And after doing that, we're going to go back to the root of our velocity server. And here we're going to open forward.secret. Inside of the forward.secret file, there will just be a single line with a random code. This is your secret key. And we're going to give this key to all of our backend servers, so all of the paper servers, to make sure they are connected to our velocity network. So what you want to do is simply copy this code and remember it for a bit. Just put it in your notes or whatever. We're going to need it in a bit. Okay, so the velocity server is configured. Next up, let's configure the backend servers. I'm going to show you how to configure a backend server with server 1. But what I'm about to show you, you should do for every single backend server that you want to connect to your network. So, a few settings we got to change here. Simply go to files. And after that, we want to look for the server.properties file. And you want to look for online mode. In my case, it's on line 38. Currently, it is untrue. This one you want to set to false. Now, online mode for your proxy is still untrue. And by setting these ones to false, it will make it so that as soon as your players switch servers, they don't have to re-authenticate with Mojang servers every single time they do so. Now, even though this might sound like a quality of life thing, it is not. Setting online mode to false is required for all of your backend servers. Now, after you've changed that, save the content, back out, and now you want to look for the config folder and after that open paperglobal.yml. Now in this config you want to scroll down all the way until you see proxies. This section over here. And here there is a line which says velocity. And what you want to do is you simply want to enable it by changing false to true. Then you want to make sure that online mode is also set to true. At least if your velocity proxy has online mode on true. And then where it says secret, this is where you want to fill in the secret key we copied earlier in this video. And beautiful, it's all set up. Click on save content, and now you wanna make sure that you do this for all of your backend servers. You need to follow these exact same steps. After that, make sure to reboot every single one of your servers, including the proxy. This way they can all start using the new configurations. And after that, you want to simply copy the hostname or IP of your proxy server. And now we can boot Minecraft, go to multiplayer, enter the IP of our proxy, and there it is. By default, it will say a velocity server. And when we join it, we are now sent to a Minecraft server. Now, of course, a proxy you can't play on. It's not even a Minecraft server. Server, but we joined the proxy and the proxy send us to the lobby. This is my lobby server. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> and what we can do now is simply type a slash server and this will show other available servers. So we got the lobby, which is the server I'm currently in. But when I do slash server SMP, the network will send me to the SMP server. There we go. We're in. And congratulations. You have now successfully set up a Velocity network. After this, you can start installing plugins and setting up the network as you please. Now, if you guys are interested, I will make a follow-up video where I show how to further configure a network like this. When it, for example, comes down to permissions, staff tools, how to properly set up a lobby and cross-server chats. So do let me know in the comments down below if that's a video you would like to see. And with that being said, that's gonna be it for today. Do make sure to subscribe to my channel join my discord thank you so much channel members and then i'll see you in the next one bye bye see you later bye bye